Their leading scorer at 19 points a game, as well as Leaky Black, who's out on a game-to-game -game basis with a sprained foot. So that's a significant drop-off for North Carolina, which thrusts K.J. Smith into the starting lineup, his first start as a Tar Heel against this Wofford squad that beat them at the Smith Center two years ago. Man-to-man -man defense for North Carolina, and this is what Wofford does. They shoot threes. Half of their field goal attempts are from beyond the three-point arc. They've played, they've scored more points from three than two. North Carolina's got to get out and defend the three. Trevor Stump, who hit that three, was on the squad that beat Carolina a couple of years ago. There's Baycott sending it long. The rebound for Brooks in the interior where Carolina will have a notable advantage today. And that's the interior is really going to be a problem. Wofford very much undersized when compared to North Carolina. They're going to have to do a great job blocking out and gang rebounding. Storm Murphy, one of their leading scorers, was out when they played on Friday. He returns, and there's Nathan Hoover, their leading scorer, who had it go halfway down. Hoover's numbers in terms of field goal shooting, particularly from three, have really fallen off this year. There's a turnover. North Carolina can't afford that. But Hoover is a really good shooter. He just hadn't settled into a comfort zone. He's got another good look. The late closeout rims out. Offensive rebound grabbed by Goodwin. He's their force inside. A wide open look for Larson. And the foul goes against Goodwin for Wofford. You so, see Cole Anthony on the bench. You see what they're missing sitting next to him is Leaky Black. And I'll tell you something, Mike. Leaky Black and Cole Anthony, between the two of them, have made 26 three-point baskets. The rest of the North Carolina team has made 22 coming into this game. Wofford has two players that individually have made more than 22. Murphy, who returns today, is one of them. So right now, for UNC, there's nobody on the active roster who's suited up today who's made more than seven three-point field goals. Long rebound belongs to Trey Hollowell and Wofford. Boy, North Carolina, they're getting their hands on the basketball on the offensive boards, but they haven't been able to convert. They have to get those offensive rebounds, and they have to score as a result. Murphy with the drive and fake, and the fadeaway just gets the back of the rim. I think Wofford would be better advised to drive the ball, draw the defense, and kick it out for a three. Now Carolina's on the board as Brandon Robinson makes just his eighth three-pointer of the year. Two very different teams in terms of what they've done lately. Wofford coming off of a Friday game against an NAIA opponent scored 112 points and hit a school record 19 threes because they can get them off in a hurry like that as Storm Murphy did. That's really a nice job. Wofford moving the ball, moving players. They got a mismatch. Garrison Brooks was trying to guard Storm Murphy, and Brooks couldn't get close enough to him to disrupt that three. Man-to-man -man for Wofford. North Carolina's really got to look to get the ball inside. Keeling had a contested look, and the rebound brought in by Hoover. Now, Wofford is not a team that will play at a breakneck pace, and I think they want this game to be in the half court. But they are capable of getting up and down the court, and they can be very dangerous shooting the threes in transition. Hoover took the bump. And that's a backcourt violation. Roy Williams, happy to be back in this building, even if it's for a short stay, was an assistant for 60 games at Carmichael from 79 to 86, and then coached them here in the last game they played here, which was 2010 in the NIT against William & Mary. So Smith running the point here, making his first start since his freshman season at the University of the Pacific, where he made three starts that year before transferring to North Carolina. His pass intercepted by Messiah Jones. The feed ahead for Bigelow. Off glass for two, coming off a 28-point performance on Friday. 28-point performance where he made seven threes. And we said Wofford not looking to run necessarily, but when they get a turnover, they're going to take it down and they can score. Baycott got the toss over the top, exactly what you've been looking for. Now, that, is, that was not a great pass. It was not well executed, but that's exactly what North Carolina has to do. 
Baycott is big enough that it doesn't have to be perfect against Wofford. You just have to get him the ball and let him operate. Jones works against Baycott, a notable size disadvantage scooped by Brooks. And Messiah Jones at 6'6", he is a back-to-the-basket guy. That's going to be a tough matchup for him on offense. Baycott had to do a lot of work just to get that ball. And it finally falls for the Tar Heels as Keeling cleans it up. Again, we see North Carolina really crashing the offensive boards. And that's one thing that you can do to make up for the fact that two of your best offensive players aren't available. Bigelow for three. Doesn't do anything to make this crowd's noise diminish. Smith feeds. It's a jam for Brooks, and the Tar Heels take the lead. And it can't get loud in here. Zion Richardson gets stuck. Shot clock at 10 for Wofford. Quick trigger, Hollowell. And the three-pointer goes. And if you're North Carolina, Wofford's going to shoot threes. They're going to make threes. You just got to keep going. Next play, don't worry about what just happened. They're hitting better than 39% from three-point range. Top 25 in the country. They're going back and forth. Carolina's trying to get back to scoring in transition, as they've always done. Not as much this year. Brooks slams it, but the Terriers... And one of the, the many claims that people made about this building was that the thermostat was adjusted upward and... Everybody always said that Dean turned the thermostat up in Carmichael Auditorium, and he must still be doing it because it's still hot in here. <laughs> a more modern building today than the last time the Tar Heels played a regular season game, but in your capacity crowd, and it is toasty. Here is Wofford and North Carolina square off, and Justin Pierce comes into the game for UNC. And that's a big break for North Carolina that Baycott makes free throws. He comes in shooting only 51%, but he knocked down two there. He's going to have opportunities inside. He's going to go to the free throw line. Murphy creates space and hits the three. He's one of the top three-point shooting, top three-point shooters in the country. That was a really nice step-back move off the dribble. He comes in at 56%, and that's not one of those small sample size things either. Brooks takes advantage of his size, gets the easy two. Wofford just has no answer for that inside. Their tallest guy out on the court right now is six feet six, Messiah Jones. He's just, he, he can't do anything about that. Brooks last year scored a career-high tying 20 against Wofford in the Carolina win. Somebody blew an assignment. Messiah Jones got open underneath. But that's what happens when you make those threes. Everybody's cheating out to the perimeter. Here's Jeremiah Francis. Foul called on Larson. That's his first for the sophomore from the Twin Cities. We talked about the fact that Wofford shoots a lot of threes. And here's Storm Murphy. He just does a great job losing the defender, then getting back behind the three-point line. And then again, you're so worried about him shooting threes, nobody's paying attention to Messiah Jones who gets an easy one. Wofford won't get another, probably won't get another one that easy all day long. Dan, I'll be interested to watch the offensive chemistry today from North Carolina as without Anthony, without Leaky Black, there are going to be a lot of lineup combinations that probably have not been on the floor together this year. And that's a very interesting observation. And I think the way you solve that problem is you put your big guys down inside and you throw them the ball. And one thing, one break that North Carolina's had so far is Nathan Hoover has not made a shot. No, and as you mentioned, from what his career numbers are from three, that's a blocking foul underneath against Wofford, and that goes on Stump, his first. Nathan Hoover, their leading scorer, is at 40% for his career, but only 29% so far this season. Well, last year he made 92 three-pointers and shot 47% from out there. So he's a guy who's capable. Now, Mike, I want to tell you, that was a blocking foul only because Larson was had his foot in the restricted area. Whenever you see the official blow the whistle, call the blocking foul, and point to the restricted area, that means it would have been a charge had he been outside 
of the restricted area. Head coach for Wofford is Jay McCauley in his first season as the head coach here, replacing Mike Young, who's now the head coach at Virginia Tech. This is a young staff. He's 36, and he's the oldest coach. Well, how about this? He coaches, and he wins his first game as a head coach on November the 5th. He goes home that night. He and his wife go to the hospital, and she delivers a baby girl. So a big day on November the 5th. Serendipitous timing to start the basketball season for Wofford. A record of 6-4 and four for the Terriers, whose next game comes on the road again at Duke. Storm Murphy has been very aggressive with the ball today. So you got to throw, you got to get the ball to Garrison Brooks. He's only open for a second in there. He's working hard. You got to put the ball in his hands. That time he gets it and finishes. The key there was the drive to the basket. Francis did a great job going along the baseline, draws the defense, and all Garrison Brooks did was follow the ball and found an open spot. A different looking Wofford team in terms of who's their leader this year. Graduated Fletcher McGee, one of the most prolific three-point shooters in recent memory in college basketball. Now playing overseas in Spain. Two defenders converge on the rejection. Goodwin's second try is thwarted, and here comes Carolina in transition. It's Pierce feeding Brooks. He's up and doesn't get the roll, but he does get a trip to the free throw line. They've got the size advantage. Go, and he was in not really in a position to try to stop that play, and sometimes it's easier to just give up the layup than it is to get that second foul. It's, it's, it really damages your team to have your best guy on the bench. Best inside guy. And the Tar Heels get stronger with Baycott on the floor. So Goodwin, the double major, computer science and English, sits for now. But don't rule out him returning here in the first half with two fouls. Terriers driving and probing. There's the open look they were hoping for. Trey Hollowell off and Baycott clears it. Nice job by North Carolina to get him to the end of the shot clock. Now they got a good shot. It just didn't go in, but that's good defense by North Carolina. So now the task is for Messiah Jones. A nice charge taken there by Trevor Stump. Messiah Jones, who's listed at 6'6", the biggest player right now for Wofford to guard Baycott. Well, Jeremiah Francis takes the ball hard to the basket, but Stump steps in very clearly and gets in position. And Francis, he's a really interesting story. He missed his junior and senior years in high school with knee problems, and this is really the, and he missed most of the preseason with knee problems, and this is really the first time that he's played since he was a sophomore in high school. He was a high school teammate of Sterling Manley. The Carolina big man who was announced earlier today is out for the remainder of the season. He had surgery but he hadn't stepped foot on the floor yet this year. Murphy with the three-pointer. He's got nine points out of Wofford's 19. They had missed five in a row, and that time North Carolina lost him. You simply cannot leave Storm Murphy all alone. It's like if, he's, if there's nobody guarding, nobody within a couple feet of him, he's going to make every one. Oh, and one of every two from deep go down. He's ready to pull it. Always ready. <laughs> Francis just clips the front of the rim. So Francis and Anthony Harris both came in. Baycott blocks that against Virginia late in the game. Still relatively unknown commodities for Carolina. In transition, there's three from Andrew Playtech. Given the current North Carolina injury situation, you expect, expect that Playtech is going to get more opportunities. And I'll tell you what, Mike, in the past when he is has had opportunities, he's made the most of them. Came into this game shooting just three of 19 from three-point range. He's a better three-point shooter than that. Murphy missed it, and the save comes in time for Trevor Stump. And this is just a great job by Baycott running the court. I thought that was an easy layup, and he just runs hard. And then on the other end, this is the way North Carolina has always wanted to play. You get the ball down the court quickly in transition before the defense gets set, and that time they made the three-point shot. Their problem this year hasn't necessarily been that they aren't, haven't been getting shots. They haven't been making the kind of shots that they normally make. 
Held under 50 points in back-to-back -back games for the first time since 1948. So Wofford has their seven-footer in the game now. David Applegren, the native of Stockholm, Sweden, to try and give them some size there. And yet, it's Baycott who comes up with the rebound, tipped by the Terriers, stays with Carolina. Well, Applegren is in there, even though he's been hurt recently, and they, I think they're probably hoping not to use him today because he's probably not really in great condition as a result of his injury situation. No, he only made his season debut back on November 26th, and this is his first year with the program after playing last year at Laramie County College. That's, yes, Laramie, Wyoming. Anthony Harris, the freshman from Woodbridge, Virginia. High-low action, Brooks to Baycott, and Applegren's size pays off for Wofford. That right, helps to be seven feet tall. Nice job by Applegren. Didn't jump, but nonetheless got his hand on the ball. Got to get him. Three-pointer would have given Wofford the lead. It's Carolina by two. They've upped the tempo. And they call a clear out on Brooks. Mike Eads says he extended the arm, the offensive foul. It's his first. Well, even if he didn't extend the arm, the defense... Defender, in that case, Bigelow, you can't just pull your way through him. That is an offensive foul, and that's a good call. And that's something that the officials have been told to emphasize. It's offensive to the sensibilities of your everyday pickup basketball player, but that's what the rules say, and it's a good call. Well, you just can't allow the bigger guys to bull their way through. That's not fair. Wofford is out indefinitely, as North Carolina announced before the game. Well, and you can see there, when he's in the game, they score more than 70 points above their opponents, and when he's out of the game, they're minus 43, so... That's, that's a glaring impact right there. Off the back of the rim for Donovan, theme love, the senior from Providence, Rhode Island, for a team that's going to go 11 deep today, trying to knock off a top 25 North Carolina team for the second time in three years. Smith and his first Carolina start drains the three. And Anthony, too, him not being on the floor, his usage rate at 32%. Usage rate, how many shots you take, how many turnovers you make, not necessarily how much you touch the ball. Is second in the ACC, only behind Landers Nolly at Virginia Tech. That's K.J. Smith's first basket of the year, if you were wondering. And it's followed up by a Christian Keeling bucket as North Carolina is in front by seven. And now Christian Keeling is a guy who can score. He has struggled shooting the ball in Carolina on a 9-0 run, but Keeling scored 1,600 points at Charleston Southern, so he can put the ball in the basket. Almost four minutes without a made field goal for Wofford, and the cold streak continues with Hoover, their leading scorer, having a tough day. Nice pass. North Carolina doing a great job. You saw K.J. Smith, he hit the last three, that time just pushing the ball up the court. That's twice now that we've seen North Carolina scoring in transition, getting threes. Cole Anthony certainly likes it. And as we said about Cole Anthony, he's got a right knee injury. They're evaluating treatment plans. They're going to make a determination as to what they're going to do in the next couple of days, but they're very fearful that he might be out for a long period of time. Do you think not having him on the floor, a guy who took a lot of shots, and they weren't shots that were disappointing to Roy because he's their best scorer, but might free other guys up to say, hey, I don't need to look to see where Cole is. I can take the shot. Well, it might free other guys up, but are they guys you really want shooting the ball instead of Cole Anthony? Basket and one for Messiah Jones. But, Mike, your point is a good one. With Cole Anthony in the game, everybody's looking to him. Everybody realizes that he's the guy who's got to have the ball. Everybody realizes, okay, I have a shot, but maybe I can get Cole a better shot. So without him there, maybe everybody else plays with a little bit more confidence with the understanding that now, okay, I've got to contribute here because we don't have Cole Anthony to fall back on. 
At least that's the hope from the North Carolina standpoint. And there are players on this North Carolina roster who have underperformed what the expectations and their career averages have been. Pierce and Keeling among those very experienced players. When you have a guy to whom you have to defer, like Cole Anthony, and that's that's exactly what the situation is, then the, your ability to rise up is a little bit less. Your ceiling, as we say in the modern world, is not quite as high as it might be if you were free to just play your ceiling or your roof, as it were, in North Carolina parlance. Or your roof, yes. Well, Mike Krzyzewski, I talked with him earlier in the year. He was talking about this particular Duke team that he has. He thinks the guys have more room to develop. Not that they're better players, necessarily. Not that he doesn't wish that he had Barrett and Williamson back, but that the guys have more chance to develop since they don't have to constantly defer to, defer to those players. There's something to that. Just five to shoot for Smith and the Tar Heels. Baycott lost it. Loose ball scooped up. Wofford's got it. Here they come after the fifth Carolina turnover. Well, Baycott needs to catch the ball and make a move. The more he dribbles, the more trouble he gets into. Storm Murphy has been exceptionally impressive. He's got 12 points. Well, he has been the offense, basically. He's keeping him in the game. Oh, my. Robinson went for a dangerous pass. And Smith converts it somehow. All right, put that one in the playbook. Pass the ball, have it bounce off four opponents, come back to your guard who drives to score. I don't know what you would call that play, but it worked. The Rube Goldberg play. <laughs> I'm sure there are a lot of younger folks in the audience instantly Googling, who is Rube Goldberg? Well, I thought Storm Murphy passed up a chance to shoot the ball. He was open. And I think anytime he's open, in this game in particular, he's got to let it fly. Killing goes behind the back, draws the double team, gets rejected by Jones. Hoover feeds the corner, the extra pass, Murphy, got it. I mean, it's, when he's open, it's like he never misses, and that was great ball movement. You draw the defense to the basket in transition, you make a couple of passes, you find an open shooter, Murphy's going to pick up that foul. His first to go along with 15 points. Wednesday, two of the top 10 teams in the country in our college basketball doubleheader. Virginia comes back after a 10-day break. Their last game against North Carolina to see Stony Brook. And Miami, Ohio, one of the non-conference teams that has won in this building, will see number one Louisville, although that number to the left of Louisville in peril come Monday's poll, 8.30, 6.30, Wednesday on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Well, truth be told, though, Miami of Ohio won what, in this building in the 60s? Yes. Okay. Right. <laughs> so it's a different Miami of Ohio team is what we're saying. It was a good football season for the Red Hawks, though. Champions of the Mid-American Conference. A tough season, though, for one of their favorite sons, Ben Roethlisberger, though. Indeed. Injury cutting it short. But plenty of ACC teams in bowls, North Carolina, one of them will be in the Military Bowl on the 29th. 10 ACC teams making it to bowl games this year. But Dan Bonner, Mike Cousins, glad to have you with us here in Chapel Hill. For the most part, North Carolina has done a pretty good job running Wofford off the three-point line and contesting the threes they do get. Oh, that's a heck of a move inside by Stump. Extra work for the reverse lay-in for the senior from Illinois. Thirty all, Wofford, out of the Southern Conference, not scared coming here to Chapel Hill today. Storm Murphy has 15 of their 30 points. And this building has undergone a couple renovations. At one point, capacity over 10,000. Today, it seats officially 68-22. And there's a lot of people that say with a, a fun game like this, Wofford earlier this year beat NC State inside of Reynolds. Well, why can't you do it every year? Well, the big difference is the capacity at the Smith Center is almost 22,000. It's a lot of season tickets of people who, one, aren't getting into the building, but two, a lot of lost revenue. Again, North Carolina goes inside and an inside play in transition.
Wofford's been patient. Stump fades away over play tag and a nice roll. Ties it at 32. Stump did a good number defensively guarding Luke May two years ago when Wofford took down North Carolina. That was their first win as a program against a top 25 team. Baycott grabbed the rebound, fouled on the floor. Well, Stump is a guy he is also noted for his three-point shooting, and that is a very difficult shot. If you're North Carolina and those are the kind of shots Wofford is getting, then you're satisfied with your defense. That's just where a guy makes a play on the offensive end. Not a lot you can do about that one. But something that North Carolina has been able to take advantage of is on the inside. That time, again, they, they didn't get the shot, but Baycott is available inside and gets the rebound and foul. Baycott number 18 in the ESPN 100 coming into college this year. Spent last season at IMG Academy where he was teammates with Jeremiah Robinson Earl, who's now one of the leaders for Villanova. He says they'll FaceTime from time to time. They have common opponents, as they did with Ohio State earlier this year, give each other advice. North Carolina needed more advice against Ohio State. <laughs> it was a close game at the half and not so close in the second. That's a great job by Baycott to run Bigelow off the three-point line. I mean, Bigelow looking for the three, doesn't get it, then he can't drive by Baycott. Nice job moving his feet. That's a bad pass, though. And that's a foul on Garrison Brooks. His second. And that's another thing that officials are emphasizing this year. That's called a pile-on play. If somebody's down on the court diving for the ball and you jump on top of that guy, it's not like trying to recover a fumble in football. That's a foul. And the referees have been told to look for that and call it a foul. And again, that's a player safety thing. Now, K.J. Smith is back in the game. We were talking about him. Coming into this game, he had zero points. But today, he's already got seven. Got a couple of assists. He's really played well. And already he's he's got played five times the number of minutes he averages in a game. Most minutes he's played in a game here at Carolina was nine earlier this year against Oregon and hadn't started a game since December 29th of 2016. Well, that ball gets bounced away. He, Smith wasn't able to control it. But again, Wofford missing the three-point shots, and I wouldn't say that they're all open three-point shots. The defense is running at them, closing in. I think Wofford feels some pressure on these threes. Hoover at 14 points a game, still pretty quiet today. Gives it up for Hollowell. Well, he hadn't scored, missed all five of his shot attempts. See, they made Murphy hesitate that time. I thought he had an open shot, but I'm sitting pretty far away. Again, North Carolina makes him think he doesn't have room, and as a result, he misses the shot. Baycott got forced out by Bigelow, calls to get it back, and gets his shot pinned, and goes right back up with the height advantage over three defenders at six for Baycott. That's just a great job. He got his shot blocked, but he didn't hang his head or get frustrated. He just stayed with it, and as a result, North Carolina gets a basket. Murphy on the drive has the mismatch against Baycott. But again, Baycott moves his feet and prevents him from getting to the basket. And wisely switches K.J. Smith back on to Murphy. Good luck with that. <laughs> Offensive board and a shot clock violation as the UNC defense stands strong. But Wofford just can't get the ball close to the basket. There were actually, I think, I don't know what they credited, but it looked to me like there were two blocked shots on that particular play. And if that's so, then they had five. Five blocked shots has helped North Carolina to this two-point lead. Back in the game clock. Offer comes out in his zone. Looks like a 1-3-1. One, one. North Carolina moving the ball. You got to get it inside against the zone. Baycott from 15 feet. One dribble, two free throws. But we wondered when Chavez Goodwin went out at about the 12-minute mark, the main post player for Wofford, how they'd fare. Here it is, a two-point game. 
Well, they've been able to hang in there, and despite the fact that they really haven't lit it up from beyond the three-point arc, they've made seven threes, but North Carolina basically has done a pretty good job defending them from beyond the three-point arc. They make 10 threes a game. When Baycott, that's his third free throw that he's made in the game. We said he's only a 51% free throw shooter. It was 17 for 33 coming into the game. Yeah. <laughs> Made his first two, then missed a couple, and now he's back at the line. And now done with his first semester of college. They finish classes on Friday. Don't go back to academics until January 8th. So full court pressure from Carolina to try and disrupt Wofford on its final possession of the first half. Murphy's hit just about everything today, and he lets it go at the buzzer. No good. Carolina takes a four-point lead into the locker room. Really well defended on that last play, and for the most part, North Carolina has done a nice job on the defensive end, and I think that's been the key to the game so far. No Cole Anthony today, no Leaky Black. Both are injured for North Carolina, trying to get to 7-3 and three before they get in the air and go get ready for Gonzaga in just a couple of days. Back and forth, Wofford from three, Carolina inside. Kelsey, Carlos, Dallin, and Luke have lots more for you coming up at the half. On ACC Network, a new episode coming your way very soon. UNC up by four here as we get ready to tip the second half. Dan Bonner, Mike Cousins, what'd you make of the first 20? Well, I thought North Carolina, their defense, I thought, was the key to the first half. They did a really nice job preventing Wofford from getting penetration into the lane and kicking it out to shoot threes. In fact, North Carolina, they had 15 points as a result of their penetration. Wofford only had five. North Carolina's done a nice job getting the ball inside, and here they go right away. Back to Baycott, whose reverse lay-in attempt is thwarted. If you joined us late, some big news for North Carolina. Cole Anthony, Leaky Black are out today. There's three from deep to make it a one-point game for Wofford. Anthony with a knee injury. He's listed as out indefinitely. They'll evaluate options for him in the coming days. And Black with a foot injury is a game-to-game -game injury. So getting the start today for North Carolina, K.J. Smith, his first Carolina start, and a nice first half for him. Chavez Goodwin, he's got the ball. He's back in for Wofford. He gives them their first lead since it was 19-18 in the first half. He sat a good portion of the first half with two fouls. Mike, we talked about his value to the team in the first half. He's really their only inside threat, and he's pretty clever in there. But you can't score when you're on the bench, and that's where he put himself with fouls. And those were his first two points. And again, that time he contests the shot and gets back in the lane to get the rebound. He's been very active here early. Storm Murphy misses the long shot. Let's see if Carolina can run a four-on-three break. Robinson to 17 feet. Man-to-man -man defense for Wofford. Every catch has been contested so far. Keeling. A lot of contact there, no call. And Stump comes away with it for Wofford, whose leading score on the year, Nathan Hoover, was 0 for 5, scoreless in the first half. Goodwin living dangerously in there. I thought he got a hand on the ball. But he's got to be careful. He's got those two fouls. Off the screen, Hollowell sends it wide. Here comes Robinson. Good block out by Baycock. And there, there, Goodwin just picked up his third personal foul, reaching at the top of the key. You just cannot do that. You know, that, I, I mean, if, if you're going to pick up your third foul and have to be blocking a shot or something inside, don't have a reach out on the perimeter 30 feet from the basket. Boy, that hurts Walford. Strategy-wise here, how long do you think he sits? Well, I think you got to sit him a while if he's going to make plays like that. And I, I don't mean that facetiously, Mike. I mean, when he's been in the game, he has not shown the ability to think, okay, I can't really commit a foul here. I'll just back off. And that's the assistant coaches are talking to him. That's just not a smart play. 
Big man who started his career at the College of Charleston under Earl Grant. And now in his second active year with Wofford. Not a lot of ball movement by North Carolina here early in the second half. Step back for Murphy. Long offensive oh, board. Play. Keeling does a great job to keep it alive. Steps through and delivers in the lane. And Wofford, when you shoot that three, if it doesn't go in, that gives North Carolina the opportunity to get a long rebound and go out in transition. That's exactly what happened on that occasion. Really nice play by Keeling. The three is a great weapon if you're making them, but if you're missing them, it can create some problems for you trying to get back defensively. Stump draws two defenders, sends it out for Jones, working on Huffman. That's a soft touch for the Chicago native. And that is that is the game for Messiah Jones. He operates inside. He's not a three-point shooter. But again, you get the long rebounds, and I think that can create some opportunities. Wofford not able to claim a kill and just tips the ball to himself and then is able to beat everybody in transition. That is an outstanding play. And remember, we said Keeling was a big scorer at Charleston Southern. And he shows you his ability to score there now. <laughs> Referees are trying to separate Nathan Hoover and Brandon Robinson. You know, Hoover's allowed to maintain his position, but he can't push Robinson out, and that's what the officials are telling him. Robinson contested pull up got it to go Robinson is a guy maybe North Carolina's most experienced player he has not been a big scorer throughout his career But if he can give you seven eight nine points in the game couple of assists. He's a really good defender He can be a big contributor Stump kicks out for Jones so he's not a three-point shooter, so they cut down on the penetration, and when they do kick it out, they kick it out to a non-three-point shooter. That's a good defensive sequence for North Carolina. Only the second three he's tried this year, and he's missed them both. Nice pass. That's a two. Now, that would have been a three last year, Mike, but his foot was on the new line. Which they had to lay down temporarily, as this is the home for Carolina women's basketball. So they put down for one game the men's three-point arc. Nice start for the Tar Heels as well on the women's side. 8-0 taking on Alabama in Tuscaloosa today with new coach Courtney Banghart. Can Hoover get on the board? His first points of the afternoon for the top scorer for Wofford. Well, you watch him shoot, you wonder how he ever misses one. That time I thought he really <laughs> took his time. When he hurries, he's not nearly as good. He said that he texts regularly with Fletcher McGee, the all-time D1 record for made threes, and you can see where he gets part of the stroke. Carolina 42, Wofford 42. This has all the makings of a down-to-the-wire game here inside Carmichael. What is his name because he was an evil little child, uh, but he said no, that was his mother's maiden name, and besides... She told him that he was born on a stormy day. So, really nice young man. And let's be honest, it's just a pretty cool name. It is a good name. It's a very good name, but, you know, uh, some kids, when they're little, I have a grandson like that, they could be a hurricane. But, uh, <laughs> but he's, he's cooled off. North Carolina he's, has done a nice job attacking him, preventing him from getting open looks here in the second half in particular. He's used to being around high-level players, though. Speaking of storms, he played for the AAU team, Mac Irvin Fire, coming out of Chicago with player at Illinois right now, Ayo Dosumu, one of the better players in the Big Ten. One of the great names in the Big Ten, too. Wofford and North Carolina here inside Carmichael, the first regular season men's game in this building since January of 1986 as they wrap up a three-game set between these two schools Carolina went there last year and won lost here in Chapel Hill a couple years ago three-pointer for Donovan theme love the senior 
from Rhode Island. He's now six for eight shooting threes. He doesn't shoot a lot, but when he does, shoots a very high percentage. Only averages three points a game. Foul is on Zion Richardson, the freshman out of Plano, Texas, part of just a two-man recruiting class for first-year head coach Jay McCauley. Wofford gets Murphy back onto the floor. This squad picked fourth in the preseason in the Southern Conference. It's got East Tennessee, UNC Greensboro, and Furman, some of the other contenders in their league this year. I'll tell you what. Messiah Jones, he may not always have the best position, but he finds a way to get a deflection. He, he really does a nice job. He fights you in there. He's had some problem with back spasms earlier in the year, but we understand he's healthy now. And in fact, today is his birthday. He's 20 years old today. See, North Carolina, if they're going to play in the half court, I think Garrison Brooks and Armando Baycott have to get the ball down on, in the post area. And that should be every time down the floor, right? Well, they don't have to shoot it down there, but I think they certainly have to touch it down there. How about that effort from Hoover? Well, and again, you're talking about a guy who has struggled all year long with his shot. He's only made one basket today. That time he had a wide open three and he missed it, but he doesn't hang his head. He just chases after the ball. And I think he surprised Garrison Brooks. So he, Hoover hit the ball, but it went off Brooks's leg. I mean, North Carolina, they've got this, uh, they're down by three, but they're, you know, if Wofford gets hot from beyond the arc, that could really be a problem for the Tar Heels. Hoover draws contact, falls to the ground, not rewarded by the officials. In transition, Harris with the kick. No conversion for UNC at the basket after the put up by Francis. And there's Messiah Jones again, getting in the middle of all that and getting the rebound away from bigger guys. Foul in the backcourt. That was Francis. Roy Williams doesn't agree with the call. Second. Francis, for a guy who's barely played basketball in three years, has played a lot of minutes today. Really remarkable that the last full season of basketball he played, you mentioned it earlier, was his sophomore year of high school outside of Columbus, was a teammate of Sterling Manley for a time, but with knee surgeries not acl surgeries just knee injuries that kept him sidelined he only had two practices before their last game so he's had a total of four practices prior to this one the team didn't have a full week of practice last week with exams here at unc and that's bad news for north carolina right there that's wofford's biggest lead but remember bigelow in their last game hit seven of eight from beyond the arc he can really knock it down if he's open he gets called for the foul there, impeding the progress, his second. Remember we were talking about penetration and how that creates points? Well, what's Storm Murphy? He creates the penetration right here, driving it in. Francis has to come and help, number 13, and when he does, that gives Bigelow just enough room. Really nice job by Storm Murphy drawing the defense. Sixth team foul against Wofford, so the next one puts Carolina at the line for a one and one North Carolina needs a basket. See, and I don't think that's the way to get it. You have Baycott out there. You've got to get him the ball. There's nobody anywhere close to his size out on the court for Wofford. Terry's on a 9-0 run. Hoover gives it up, and it's a dozen unanswered points after the stump three-pointer. Now, there's not a lot of penetration there, but just a little bit of penetration. The defender steps away. Baycott gets the look he wanted, a couple of them in fact, and a third as he falls away, rims out. Okay, now they got him the ball. You're absolutely right. He has to finish that. And early in his career, if Baycott has had a problem, that's been one of them. Sometimes he gets the ball inside and he doesn't finish. Hoover baseline draws a couple defenders. Hollowell, the open teammate. And who, look who's battling in there. It's Baycott fighting against Jones, who's trapped and puts it up and in anyway. Remarkable for Messiah Jones. Timeout, North Carolina. 
14 straight points for Wofford. They're up 53 42. Four trouble for North Carolina, and that's exactly what we've seen. The Wofford Terriers have knocked down four three point shots, mostly with the penetrate and kick out kind. And then Messiah Jones battling against bigger players inside, scores in there. Wofford has shot 53% in the second half. North Carolina only three for 15. And Storm Murphy and Trevor Stump have led the way. If a team wants to shoot threes, what you have to do is make them shoot twos. You try to stay in front, and if somebody drives by, you don't cover them. But there, that's the problem. The defense comes, they miss the shot, but nobody blocks out. Chavez Goodwin got the tip in for Wofford. He sat for almost half of the first half with two early fouls. Anthony Harris, drive and pull up. The bad luck at the rim continues for UNC. You know, Wofford isn't jumping in there blocking shots, but those are not uncontested shots. The Wofford defenders are in the neighborhood. Baycott fumbled it and misses again. Now numbers as Baycott was slow to get up. To the corner, Hoover wide open. Boy, he's just having a really tough year, and Goodwin is going to pick up his fourth foul. So Goodwin got whacked in the head, and he gets his foul anyway. And the seventh foul, and now Hoover is slow to rise in front of the Wofford bench. Well, he just took that jump shot from the corner and missed it. I did not see what happened. North Carolina has missed its last 11 shots. And I can't tell whether he's got a cramp. That might be what it is. So he gets that quadricep stretched out there. He's their leading scorer on the year, but even in the absence of a standout performance from him offensively, they have still performed admirably today. Well, he's only one for eight shooting the ball. And he, I mean, he has all day to shoot this. When you figure if one's going in, he's going to get it. And he goes down. I guess, you know, he's he tightened up. Nobody hit him. So the foul on Goodwin, as you mentioned, his fourth. Oh, my. And that's a violation there against Justin Pierce on the free throw because it was a one-on-one -one situation with the seventh team foul. Well, you could. I mean, North Carolina, there's nine minutes and 39 seconds left in the game, so that's a big advantage for the Tar Heels if they can get to the free throw line. But it's 15 feet. you got to get it at least that far. Now a crowd trying to get into it. Murphy with a hand in his face leaves it short. That's a really nice job by KJ Smith. Now you gotta push the ball. Put some pressure on Wofford. This is what has frustrated Roy Williams to no end to begin this year. It's their 10th game of the season today. Robinson gets the three, but their lack of offense, he said, they haven't forced enough turnovers, but haven't posted up efficiently when they do run. Stump's got the speed advantage there against Brooks. Shot clock at 10 for Murphy inside the arc. Over the back against Jones. And that defensive series right there is exactly the way that North Carolina has to play. Don't let the Wofford player, in this case it was Storm Murphy, get by you. Garrison Brooks steps in and helps out, but not so far as to create an open shot opportunity. That's the way you have to play. Play him straight up. Don't let him get by you. Don't give him those opportunities to penetrate and kick it out for threes. Brandon Robinson at the line for Carolina. Six of seven coming into this game. And he's got the first. When we're done here in Chapel Hill, it's to the studio for nothing but net. Kelsey Riggs, Luke Hancock, Carlos Boozer, and Dallin Cuff look back at the best games from last week and show us the week ahead. That's 6 Eastern right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Ryan, what a big sequence by Brandon Robinson. He hit that three, makes a couple of free throws, and now Carolina within single digits. But this comeback started on the defensive end and has to continue on the defensive end. Brooks is doing a nice job staying in front of Murphy. 
Oh, my. His three-point shooting percentage continues to wither today here inside Carmichael. Paint is empty for Carolina. It's Robinson. Tipped out by Brooks. And the foul on Murphy. More free throws coming for UNC. That's a nice job. When you're struggling shooting, either from three-point range or two-point range, figure out a way to get yourself to the free throw line, and hustle is one way to do it. It's a place where Keeling has not been much this year. It's one for three coming into this game. With a second straight missed shot, Brooks tips it back up top and gives the Tar Heels another chance. And gets rewarded. Puts it in. He's got 11. That's a really nice job to put Garrison Brooks down there. When Brooks can catch it on the block and doesn't have to make any complicated moves, he's going to score a very high percentage of the time. Hoover looking for Murphy, turns it over. Roy is juiced, Carmichael is loud, and Carolina's on the comeback trail. And one of the reasons they find themselves in a precarious spot down six here is they are without the second leading freshman scorer in America, Cole Anthony. Well, let's see if they continue the strategy to try to get Garrison Brooks down on the block. Baycott down there is only two for 14. Brooks is five for seven, so I think if I'm going to throw the ball inside, I'm going to try to throw it to Garrison Brooks. Instead, it's Robinson. Just clips the rim barely on a three. Not a great look. Well, not a great sequence for North Carolina. They allowed themselves to be defended easily. Murphy sees two defenders, finds his open teammate, Trey Hollowell. And those are the kind of shots during Wofford's run that built the lead. They were making them. That's a good look. Rare turnover. The feed ahead for Stump. He's going all the way to the basket. A lot of contact there. He had a player ahead. That's a pass that he's got to make to Hollowell. The high-low is too high from Baycott. Well, one of the things that... Armando Baycott doesn't do well early in his career as pass the ball. Coming into the game, coming into this game, he had played in nine games and he had a grand total of four assists. So he's not really a passer. Doesn't have any assists today, so. Stump. He's got three free throws coming on the third foul for Garrison Brooks. It's a nice job by Brooks to get out, and you want to try to pressure the shot, but even out there, you have to jump straight up in the air. If your momentum carries you into the shooter, the referee's going to call that a foul every time. Stump is back to action this year. Had a back injury and only played eight games last year, so he got a medical red shirt. He's now up to 14 points. Wofford with its first point in about four minutes. One of the smallest undergraduate enrollments in the country, about 1,600 students, and yet not even the smallest in their own conference with Presbyterian, about 1,100 students. <laughs> well, speaking of small things, Stump has only been to the free throw line twice prior to this trip. Now he's been there, he's had five free throws, and he's made all five of them. Wofford is an excellent free throw shooting team. You don't want to put them on the line. And he's played much more like a Redwood than a Stump today. That's where you have to go with the ball. Again, you get him the ball close enough for the basket. If he's got to take more than one dribble, sometimes he struggles going. You get him the ball that close, Garrison Brooks can finish. He's got 13 for Carolina. Void of its leading scorer, Cole Anthony, and no leaky block today as well. And that time, they lost Messiah Jones on the backside. It's not the first time that's happened either. Uh, Baycott just didn't do a good job on the screen and roll. And again, they're trying to get out and pressure the three-point shooters. 
Baycott forced off the block by Jones, who may not be tall, but he has proven to be mighty on the interior. That's two more for Brooks and one from the free throw line. And we were just talking about Baycott not passing it well. Well, that was a pretty good pass right there. This is just a simple screen and roll that is not handled very well. Baycott goes stepping out, and the stump goes to the basket. Nobody there to help. We talked about Baycott only having four assists coming in. Now he's got five assists on the year. An excellent pass inside. I just don't think Wofford has the personnel inside to, to be able to fend Garrison Brooks close to the basket. He had 20 earlier this year in Atlantis against Alabama. Sits at 15 after that made basket and missed free throw. Well, get him up and get him right, get him down inside again. Throw it to him. What in the world is he doing? Keeling got stuck under the basket, left his feet and had nowhere to go. It's gotta be a frustrating possession for Brooks. It's a frustrating possession for Roy Williams too. And what do you want to bet Keeling's coming out of the game? Play Tech ready to check in at the next whistle. Blocking foul is the call as Murphy flew to the line. And again, you see the blocking foul called, and you see the referee point to the restricted area. Now, they called that on the pass, I believe, or did they? Nope, I guess not. Watch the referee points at the three-point arc, or at the uh, restricted area arc. And an easy call with Keeling having his right shoe entirely within that semicircle. Right, they did call it on the pass, so uh, that's only four team fouls on North Carolina, which is a break because we said Wofford is an excellent free throw shooting team. See, a team that likes to shoot threes, make them shoot twos. And that time, Hollowell pressured on the mid-range jumper, didn't get it to go. Four and a half to go as North Carolina gets it to within five. 17 points for Garrison Brooks, the junior from Lafette, Alabama. Brooks works hard for position in there, and if you can get him the ball on time, nothing Wofford can do to stop that. Murphy left alone. The three-pointers have not fallen as reliably in the second half for Wofford as they did in the first. Well, they did during that one stretch where they built the lead, but now if you live by the three, sometimes that three goes away. At one point in the second half, Wofford had 14 unanswered points to help them build this lead. Jones has been playing on the high side all day. Just had to step in front to intercept that pass. Well, Smith really. At North Carolina, no matter how far behind, they aren't out of the game when they're in this building, and Wofford is discovering that. Wofford has only made one of their last nine threes, and North Carolina has been getting the ball consistently inside to Garrison Brooks, who has been converting. Messiah Jones that time inside for Wofford. North Carolina defending the three pretty well. Wofford employs the element of surprise. They get a two. If you were going to award a, a PhD for this game, a Pride, Heart, and Desire award, I think you'd have to give it to Messiah Jones, who has been vastly outsized and yet has held his ground well against both Baycott and Brooks. Well, he, did a, he reacted very well, but a good pass is a dunk. That just was not very well thrown by North Carolina. Stump got a hand on it. Harris controls for the Tar Heels. Closing in on three minutes to go. Playtech launches and delivers. That's his second three-pointer of the game, and that was a big one. Murphy's got a mismatch here with Brooks guarding him. Murphy has not scored in the second half. And Brooks has been guarding him most of the time. He was almost unstoppable in the first. Around the horn to stump for three, and it's good. They answer at the other end. And that's what they did when they stretched out the lead. They penetrated, they forced the defense to rotate and found the open man. Give it to him. Too late. Playtech nearly turned it over. It's recovered by Francis and rejected. Messiah Jones, the guy, your guy, he's inside doing a great, great job. That's just battling. 
the Messiah has been a savior for them inside with Chavez Goodwin. They're starting big, saddled with foul trouble. Can Hoover score? You know, Hoover was looking to score as soon as he started his cut, and he doesn't look like he's moving very well to me. Came out a couple minutes ago to get his legs stretched out. Oh, that is some play by Murphy. Here comes Murphy with a three on two. The pass back for Stump, rejected by Robinson. That ball's got to go right away. Murphy waited too long. He should have thrown it ahead to Holloway. Just 95 seconds to play. Wofford up 65, 58 over North Carolina, the number 17 team in the country. Well, Brandon Robinson made a great play in transition defense with that blocked shot. He was all alone down there, but he was able to recover. And then he gets the ball and takes it to the basket. That's what you have to do, force him into fouling situations. Thursday, 8.30 Eastern, you get a comprehensive look at all 10 ACC teams in postseason play with the Huddle Bowl preview special. You have Clemson and Ohio State in the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, and the Tar Heels are in action. Mac Brown in year number one, getting them bowl eligible, taking on Temple in the Military Bowl in Annapolis. Fight for the ball, jump ball. Wofford has possession. Nice job by Harris sneak in there on the free throw and Harris again he's another one of those guys who hadn't played very much this year he's been troubled he actually did have an ACL injury during his senior season in high school he had the ACL surgery last December first time he had played this year was against Virginia as well needing to get some stops Full court pressure from Carolina. Murphy nearly lost it. Jones is trapped baseline, sends it out for Hollowell. And a timeout taken by Jay McCauley. With his six and four Wofford squad, this is a tough stretch for them. They played Friday night. They finished their final exams, were done at 5 p.m. They tipped off at 7 p.m. in their home gym, got here yesterday. They play this game, and then the next game on their schedule is at Cameron Indoor. So they're making the uh, tour of the historic sites in terms of basketball. They're, if they can, back a road. they can pick up a win in this building. They may be the last team to win here. That's not North Carolina men's basketball for quite some time. 65-59. They take a timeout here. 15 seconds to shoot. What's the strategy talk for them to preserve this, set it in amber, and make it a win? Well, now, I think for Wofford, the one thing you don't want to do is get too conservative. Continue to play the way you play, and that involves ball movement and player movement, dribble penetration leading to kickouts for threes. That's what they do. That's what you have to continue to do. It would help him if Hoover could make a jump shot. He has really struggled today. But you see how much confidence they have in Hoover. He is still in the game. They've never waned from him. He's got it in the corner. Just seven to shoot. Got to attack now. Stump drives on Brooks, spins in the lane, and it's swiped away by Harris. He leads the charge with four Tar Heels. These possessions have got to be quick. Harris. Back iron, fights for the ball, goes up, and puts it back in. 65-61 inside, a minute to go. Timeout, Roy Williams. Well, I thought all along what they should do is take the ball inside, and so they do it in a rather unconventional way. Nobody blocks him out. He misses the shot, follows it, and scores inside. A good contest on the three-point shot, but Holloway took himself out of the play, and that allowed Harris to go straight to the basket. That is now 18 offensive rebounds in the game for North Carolina. And they have dominated on the glass from the beginning. Well, when they have been able to get it inside, they have been able to dominate inside, 
except that Baycott has played very poorly in there. He was only he's only two for 14 shooting the ball, so he wasn't able to finish inside. But once they went away from Baycott and started going to Brooks, they've been able to take advantage. And Jay McCauley knows there's very little that his team can do to defend that. It's Brooks, Playtech, Smith, along with Robinson and Harris to defend for North Carolina. And the foul comes just eight seconds into the possession. Well, again, that's only North Carolina's fifth team foul. So you can afford to be very aggressive at least one more time and see if you can come up with the steal. And again, the shot clock this year does not reset to 30. It reset it to, it stayed at 22. It resets to 20 or if there's more to whatever it is. He's very adept ball handling and passing here from Wofford, three for Hoover is good, and what a time to come alive. You wanna know why he's still in the game? They have perfect confidence in him. Kick back, Robinson, top of the key, three. There's the answer, 18 seconds to play. 68-64, and another timeout. Now, Roy Williams, that's their last timeout. He's upset. He felt like Trevor Stump hooked the North Carolina defender to get loose. And here's Stump. He's coming around Smith. That's what Roy Williams is complaining about right there. He thought he hooked him. And Nathan Hoover, I'm telling you now, he has the shooter's mentality. Prior to that, he was 1 for 10 shooting the ball. One for nine from beyond the arc, but a guy like that, all he's thinking is the next one's going in. Career high, 16 points for Brandon Robinson this afternoon here inside Carmichael, who's started every game he's played. His minute load has taken a big increase this year as well. More responsibility for him. And this Carolina squad is trying to avoid going to six and four before they get on a plane tomorrow and play Gonzaga midweek. A loss for them would all but assure them dropping out of the AP top 25 for the first time since February of 14. It's, it's not very often that they lose three games in a row. No. I mean, that just never happens. Their last three-game losing streak, you have to go back almost two years to January of 2018. Games against Virginia Tech, NC State, and Clemson. And Wofford today has hoisted 43 point shots, but the numbers say that's the style they play and they've hit 14. Well, they hit 14, North Carolina has eight, and that's actually six, or excuse me, North Carolina has six. Six is actually more than North Carolina averages. They average about a little more than five a game. They dominated the rebounding end of it. Now remember, this is Carmichael Auditorium and stranger things have happened. 18 seconds is a lot of time left here for North Carolina. I showed you that highlight. They came back down eight in 17 seconds. Into Hoover. Off to Stump. The problem that you have if you're North Carolina, and now that's 16 fouls, so the next one they're going to the free throw line. And the shot clock is off now with only 15 seconds left in the game. There's nobody out there you can really foul except Messiah Jones. If he handles the ball, I would foul him immediately. But they've got to foul as the inbounds goes to Murphy, who came into this game a perfect 13 for 13 at the free throw line. Well, Murphy is 13 for 13. Stump is now 5 for 5. Hoover shoots 94%. So they've got a lot of guys who can shoot free throws. And no timeouts for North Carolina. So on a loose ball, they've got to run and score in a jiffy. 13 for 14. I told you there's something about this building. Robinson, he's got to shoot. No good. Rebound for Jones, and he's wrapped up with four ticks on the clock. Well, what Walford has shown you today is the power of the three point shot. It's got to be frustrating for Roy Williams. I mean, of course, he's playing without Cole Anthony. They're playing without Leaky Black. Their defense was pretty good in certain areas, but they only forced five turnovers. They weren't able to get out in transition. 
And if you can't do that, it's hard to make up that deficit in the three-point area. So for the second time in three seasons, the Wofford Terriers come to Chapel Hill and knock off a top 25 North Carolina squad. For UNC, their first three-game slide since January of 2018 with 11-1 Gonzaga waiting around the corner. Really great effort by Wofford. We knew they were a three-point shooting team. They came in here and shot threes. Even when they went on stretches where the threes weren't going in, they kept firing away. And how about Nathan Hoover? Had made one shot all day, makes the biggest shot of the game. What a great job. A tireless effort from Wofford from start to finish. A 14-0 run in the second half, helping put this one in their favor. Wofford now 7-4. Carolina falls to 6-1.